everybody, Dr. Ryan here. I'm a board certified specialist internist. Thank you so much for joining me. Even as we navigate our way through osteoporosis in this, our 32nd episode in the OSCE series. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, well, what are you waiting for? So we have Mr. M. Zulu today. Sorry, Mrs. M. Zulu. 60 year old female employed as a cashier at a local supermarket. She is known with asthma, which is poorly controlled on inhalers. The patient has been self-medicating by using prednisone, 5 mg eight hourly <coughs> Excuse me. for the past two days, plus two years. She fell while getting out of a taxi and she sustained a right neck of femur fracture. As shown here, oh dear, looking quite nasty. So first up, describe the findings in the uh, lateral x-ray. Not really chest x-ray, that's a spinal x-ray, but anyway, we'll talk about that a bit later, right? So this is a list of the questions we're going to be tackling today, just a bird's eye view, and let's tackle them one at a time, everybody. What is a fragility fracture for two marks? It is a fracture occurring with little or minimal trauma, such as a fall from a standing height or while performing normal activities of daily living. Examples of that is dressing, eating, ambulating, toileting, and hygiene, right? Uh, such fractures can be asymptomatic in that did you know that 75% of all vertebral fractures are asymptomatic? Okay, now talking about that, what are the sites for osteoporotic fractures? Well, spine or vertebral fractures and this you detect if there's a reduction in the vertebral height of at least 20% or 4 millimeters. Those are the two key things we look for. Loss of the normal vertebral height by 20% or 4 millimeters. Right, osteoporotic fractures also affect the hips. The distal radius, uh, often via the mechanism of falling on an outstretched arm, and we call that a collis fracture. And then, of course, it affects the humerus as well. Uh, nothing funny about the humerus. Ha, 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 ha. What is the investigation of choice to assess for osteoporosis for one mark? The infamous DEXA bone scan. So, DEXA stands for Dual Energy X ray Absorptiometry bone density scan. So how do you interpret a DEXA bone scan? Well, normal bone mineral density T-score is greater than minus one. So uh, when we speak about T-scores, we are comparing the patient's BMD to that of a young sex matched control, right? That's a T-score. Uh, so osteopenia means a T-score of between minus one to minus 2.5. Osteoporosis is when your T-score tips below minus 2.5. We speak about glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis in the patient who is taking autoprednisone for a dose of at least above 5 mg daily for the last three months. That is the criteria we look for. Patient on autoprednisone at above 5 mg per day for at least the last three months, and they score a T score of uh, below negative 1.5. The T-score, as we know, is used in postmenopausal females and in men over the age of 50. And a Z-score is where you compare the patient's BMD to an age and sex matched control, right? Z-score is used in premenopausal females in men below the age of 50 years and in kids. Alrighty, how do you interpret your BMD scan results? It's the same thing that we just discussed in the last slide, but just pictorially represented here. So normal bone mineral density is from uh, minus 1 to plus 1. Right, osteopenia. This is the this is the T score, right? Osteopenia is basically from um, minus one to minus two point five. Anything below that is osteoporosis. What are the indications to send the patient for a DEXA bone scan? Well, it's a whopping fifteen marks here, so we've got to have a lot of content. So, regardless of additional risk factors, any male who is above seventy years, any female above sixty five years, if the patient has a known secondary cause for osteoporosis, which means early menopause defined as menopause before the age of 45. Hypogonadism in males or females. Systemic diseases known to affect bone adversely, like myeloma, like um, Cushing syndrome, for instance. Bone toxic drugs, right? Uh, also celiac disease as well, right, as an example. Uh, bone toxic drugs as well. Uh, radiographic evidence of vertebral fractures or apparent osteopenia. More indications as a history of fragility fracture at an age above 40 years. Strong clinical risk factors in the way of a family history of hip fracture or osteoporosis. BMI below 19. Regular alcohol intake, and that's defined as more than two drinks per day. Smokers, poor nutrition, poor intake of calcium and vitamin D. 
to facilitate decisions as well. For instance, decision to start or stop a drug, especially the bisphosphonates, hormone replacement therapy, and so forth. Now, I'm sure most, most of us have heard of the FRAX index or the FRAX score. What is the FRAX score and how do you interpret it? Well, FRAX is a statistically robust fracture risk prediction tool developed by who? The World Health Organization. Who? For worldwide use, okay? Now, FRAX combines both bone mineral density and clinical risk factors in order to predict 10-year probability of a major osteoporotic fracture. So it portends the risk over the next 10 years as to whether a patient will or may or may not have a fragility fracture. So the patient is regarded high risk for osteoporotic fracture and requires treatment for osteoporosis if the 10-year risk probability of hip fracture exceeds 3% or the 10-year risk probability of major osteoporotic fracture exceeds 20%. What are the components of the FRAX index for 12 marks? Well, we look at age, between 40 and 90 years old, the gender, the weight, the height, previous history of fragility fracture over 40 years of age. If, you're, uh, uh, if you have a parent uh, with a hip fracture, current smoking status, glucocorticoid use, and we said it must be above 500 grams daily for at least the last three months, secondary causes of osteoporosis, alcohol intake above three units per day, femoral neck bone mineral density from the dexa bone scan and rheumatoid arthritis, okay? What are the benefits and limitations of FRAX for four marks? Well, the benefits is that treatment decisions are not just based on the T-score alone. They are based on a composite score, and hence we can make decisions more accurately. It identifies patients at high risk for fractures, ensures patients are offered treatment to lower their osteoporotic risk or the osteoporotic fracture risk, and helps to avoid giving treatment to those who are at low risk and those who have little to gain from the treatment. The limitations of FRAX is that more research needs to be done uh, on different ethnicities to determine accurate fracture risk based off ethnicity. FRAX does not take into account cumulative doses um, uh, in some risk factors. Example, cumulative steroid dose exposure, pack years of smoking, number of fractures, the cumulative amount of alcohol which is consumed. FRAX also does not include some risk factors that increase risk of fractures independently, like falls and frailty and immobilization, which are very important in the geriatric population, anticonvulsants, SSRIs, PPIs, and so forth, okay? What investigations would you do for somebody with osteoporosis? You do a full blood count, you do a chemistry panel, an alkaline phosphatase, calcium magnesium phosphate. You've got to do your 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels and determine whether the patient is insufficient, whether it's replete or whether it's not. All right. Uh, a thyroid function test, parathyroid hormone level, serum protein electrophoresis, hunting for myeloma or suspicion of a plasma cell dyscrasia, ESR, 24 hour urinary calcium. You want to also consider sex hormone levels in males and females may indicate it. An example where the menopause state is uncertain in females or you're thinking the male may have a low testo level. Right. What are the non-pharmacological treatment options to treat osteoporosis for 8 marks? Well, calcium supplementation and the recommended daily allowance is between 1,000 and 1,200 mg per day, which is 1 to 1.2 grams per day per os. Vitamin D supplementation, which is 6 to 800 international units per day per os. That's the RDA. Uh, encourage a balanced diet, encourage exercise. So we're talking about weight bearing and muscle strengthening, brisk pace walking at least. They say five kilometers per day, four times a week. That's a tall order, but that's a recommendation, right? Improving strength and balance and also reduces the risk of falls. Limiting alcohol intake, stopping smoking, so smoking cessation, avoiding bone toxic drugs and prevention of falls. Now, what are the pharmacological treatment options to treat osteoporosis for six marks? Well, these are subsertified into anti-resorptive agents versus anabolic agents. So your anti-resorptive agents we have is estrogen-containing hormone replacement therapy. Then we have the SERMs. SERMs is an acronym which stands for Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulator SERMs. Then we have the, the most famous in this category is the bisphosphonates, calcitonin and denosumab. The denosumab is a rank L receptor ligand. Right, the anabolic agents is teleperitide. Teleperitide is a parathyroid hormone analog. Alrighty. Now, with specific reference to bisphosphonates, what's the mechanism of action of bisphosphonates? They are potent inhibitors of osteoclastic bony resorption. What are the contraindications to bisphosphonates for five marks? Any patient who has hypocalcemia. Because remember, bisphosphonates are going to literally uh, take the calcium from the bloodstream and deposit it back into the bone. So obviously, the patient may end up hypocalcemic. 
If the patient's already hypocalcemic, then that is a contraindication, right? Other contraindications are renal dysfunction with the estimated GFR below 30. If you're using oral preparations, if the patient has a history of esophageal stricture, impaired esophageal dysmotility, inability to stand or sit for 30 to 60 minutes after ingestion of the drug. What are the side effects of bisphosphonates? Well, can cause influenza or flu-like symptoms after the first oral or IV dose. You simply want to reassure the patient cheap with paracetamol and NSAIDs. Right, upper GI symptoms, it can cause infrequent bone, muscle, and joint pains. The famous one that mostly comes up in exams is avascular osteonecrosis of the jaw. And they will show you a picture of somebody with terrible necrosis of the jaw, and they give you a history of having starts with bisphosphonate. That is one of the rare, but one of the more notable side effects. Atypical fractures as well. What are the different bisphosphonates which are available to us? Well, we have alandronate. Uh, the, the dose is 70 milligrams weekly for us. Ricetronate or ricendronic acid, ibandronate and zolandronic acid, right? And the dose there is 4 milligrams IV yearly for 5 years, all right? What advice would you give to someone who is taking autobosphosinase? You must take it on an empty stomach after an overnight fast. Take it in an upright position. You must give calcium and vitamin D, D supplementations which should be taken at a different time of the day because they interfere with absorption. Patients should not eat or lie down for 30 minutes uh, after taking an endonate or acetonate and 60 minutes after taking ibandonate. Okay, my friends, I just want to talk about denying ourselves, taking up our cross and following the Lord Jesus. The Greek word for death is called thanatos. hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Thanatos, right? So when we accept Christ into our lives, we take on the nature of Christ, right? And Christ always did everything sacrificially. He always listened to the will of the Father. And he sacrificed even to the point of death. Right? So Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says that we are now crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me. And so in effect, we are now dead to the world. Dead to the temptation of the world. Dead to what the world considers great. All right? So if you break it down, the T stands for thirst. Let me just get my pen in here. Uh, so T stands for thirst. We are thirsting after the Holy Spirit. When we do that, He will fill us so that rivers of living water will flow through us. H is holiness. We are always pursuing holiness in Christ. A is affection. Affection in the way of love for God and love for our fellow man. Remember, the cross has uh, goes in two directions, vertical and horizontal. Vertical speaks of our love for Christ. Horizontal is our love for people. N is non-retaliation. Whenever somebody tries to provoke you, we behave like a dead man. Imagine if you try to provoke a dead man. What does he do? Absolutely nothing. That is our approach as well. A is agony of abandonment. Remember, the Bible says, in this world you will have trouble. Take heart, for I have overcome the world. Yes, if you are a disciple of Jesus, the world will be against you. That speaks of the agony of abandonment. But take heart, because... We are serving a God who loves us and who cares for us. T is trust. So you always put your implicit trust in the Lord. O is obedience. And obedience is always better than sacrifice. S is sympathy. You know, when you are spirit-filled, you will have empathy and compassion for the suffering of others. Right? So that's the acronym, Thanatos, speaking about self-denial and death to the world. I'll see you soon. Take care.